like this. We are on day three of our fast, and I hope you guys are looking forward to the revelation that today is going to bring for you guys. Um, as you know, our teachings are talking about the multifaceted of a woman. We had her dad to bring us that good word on Sunday about Leah and how her gifts didn't start to prosper until she focused on who was the gifter and not the gift itself, the provider of the gift. We had Danny discuss with us um, loving from loving God with a pure heart. So today we're going to continue with Proverbs 31 and a, and a few attributes of a virtuous woman. So like I said, today we're going to just discuss a few of the attributes. Obviously, there are a lot more that you get from Proverbs 31, but I'm going to just focus on five that spoke to me while I was studying the word and talking to God about what I wanted to bring today or what he wanted me to bring today to the table. Um, for a little background, for those who don't know what Proverbs 31 is, it's pretty much where King Lemuel is talking about um, the teachings that his mom taught him on how to look for a wife or the things to look for in, when looking for a wife. So the first one I'm going to go into is being a blessing to others. As women of God, we should always be a blessing to others. And this comes from the scripture of Proverbs 31, 11 through 12. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So when I was looking at this scripture, the thing that spoke to me is that it's talking about how your husband honors you because you are bringing richness to his life. You are an addition to his life. You are going to help him get to where he needs to be. So God is calling us to be a blessing to others. And my question that I want to leave to you with this section is, how has God called you to be a blessing to others? What are the things that you're doing that when people see you, they know you are of God, that the blessings that they're getting from you is through God. How are you honoring God by blessing others? <clears throat> the second one I wanna go into is be delightful. In Proverbs 31, 13, so guys, we're gonna have a lot of verses to go along with what um, I'm talking about. So in Proverbs 13, 31, 13, the, in the NSV version, it does say she looks for linen and works with her hands in delight. So when you think about your work, I know oftentimes there are things about our job that frustrates us. So even generally, even with our businesses, there are things that frustrates us. So when I say be delightful, it is understanding that, yeah, we are going to have times where things are going to be frustrating to us, but it's really important that we always approach our work with a positive and enthusiastic attitude. And it does not mean cherry and cheerful 24 seven, but we also have to make sure that even in this, even in the midst of the frustration, there's still a positive attitude about it because that is how we are going to be able to see what those solutions are. When we give into those frustrations, when we give into those overwhelming feelings, it's when we lose the sight of what our purpose is. So be delightful with your work, be enthusiastic, be cheerful. <clears throat> um, in Colossians 3.23, in a new international version, where it says, whether you do work at it, whether you do work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for the human masters. It's just a reminder that the work that we are doing is not for us, but to glorify God. So if we approach it with that aspect, it always will help us keep that positivity, that cheerfulness and that enthusiasm. Like I said, we are going to have moments where we do get frustrated, but we don't want to give in to those moments. Acknowledge those moments. Acknowledge those moments through God. Let God know, like, hi, God. hey, God, it's me. I'm frustrated right now, and I want to be. In I want to be enthusiastic about this. Help shift my perspective. Help shift my. Help shift my mindset. Help me understand what about this is frustrating me, so that I can approach it in a more positive light so honestly give yourself an attitude check how is your attitude when you're approaching your work whether it's 
how is your attitude when you're approaching anything, honestly, through friends that frustrate you or through your work, through your boss, through your businesses? Always give yourself an attitude check because guess what? We need to be delightful. Number three, have good time management. So the scripture that I'm going to go with is Proverbs 31, 15, 18, and 27. So I'm pretty much picking out pieces from it and jumping. But she gets a wallet. It's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So <laughs> when I first met this, the first thing I said to myself was like, sis not sleeping? Because I'm tired of reading it. Me, I got tired while reading all the things that she was doing. But as I sat in it and I literally sat in it and I started to think more about what the word was saying, I realized that in her way, she was utilizing her time to the best of her maximum. She was taking what she was doing and making sure that she was not idle in that time. She was ensuring that every part of her time while she was up was doing something that would prosper her family or prosper her husband if she didn't have a family. So I want us to take that and look at it as when we are doing things, we want to make sure that our time is being maximized to glorify the work that God has put us to do. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Sorry. She doesn't allow herself to be idle. God is handing out endless love and grace, but our time is like a precious gift card with an expiration date. So let us use it wisely to tackle the mission he has given us. Question for you is, how are you using your time to sharpen your gifts? What are you doing in your downtime? What are you doing in your time that is not allocated for rest? Are you, you, are you taking that time to ensure that the gifts that God has given you are being sharpened? Are you sharing those gifts with others and in a time management form? form? So again, I don't want you to think like, don't think like me, sis never slept. She slept, okay? But she used her time wisely. Number four, be a teacher. <clears throat> she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction and is on her tongue. Proverbs 31, 26, be a teacher. So I believe that everyone does have a form of teaching in them. While it might be a, a silent form of teaching, it's still a form of teaching. So you teach, you can teach verbally and non-verbally. How are you carrying yourself that people want to say, how do you, the people, well, I'm sorry, how do you, are you carrying yourself that would make people want to say, who are you? Why do you carry yourself like that? What is the driving force behind your nature? And that in itself is a teaching moment because that's when you say, well, you know what? I'm the king of a daughter, you know? And this is what that means, a teachable moment. Teaching is a powerful tool for spiritual growth. It helps us learn, it stays accountable and invites God's blessings. So who are you sharing your knowledge with today? How people, how do people know that you are a daughter of a king? What teachable moments can you give to others that will lead them back to God? So always you want to be a teacher in all your ways. <clears throat> and then the last one I have is be focused on God. So in Proverbs 31, 30, it says charm is deceit. I'm sorry, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Like Danny talked about yesterday from Peter 3 through Peter 3, 3, 3 through 4, your beauty shouldn't be your only, shouldn't be only on the exterior, but it needs to be that of your inner self. How is your beauty shining through based on how you are handling yourself internally? 
The Proverbs 31 woman doesn't focus on looks, but on God and worship. Like in John 15, four through five, when we abide in him, we bear fruit. We bear fruit, fruit feeds others. When we are bearing fruit, I'm sorry, when we are bearing fruit, we are feeding others, whether it's feeding their spirit feeding their emotionally, feeding them emotionally, feeding them physically, feeding them through hunger, feeding them through hunger. Yeah, feeding them through food. Sorry, not through hunger. Sorry, guys. How are we bearing fruit? How, how are we bearing our beauty that it comes from internal and then goes to our external? <clears throat> In this form, she's a woman that is in action, a guide for all. Being wise means making God the center, as Proverbs 9 teaches. To be wise and seek to know and obey God, letting him guide your path, in Proverbs 3, 6. Is there anything that is distracting you from being able to have your beauty shine from within that's distracting you from the lord because that is the only way your beauty is going to come from shining within is by being wise asking god for wisdom and teaching you how to not only focus on your exterior okay so those are the attributes that um i that spoke to me as i mentioned before it is, there are many attributes that Lemuel speaks about in Proverbs 31, but these were the ones that spoke to me or resonated with me that I wanted to share with you guys. So like I said, the first one was be a blessing to others. The second one is to be delightful. Third one is to have good time management. The fourth is to be a teacher. And the last one was to be focused on God. <laughs> So at this moment, I am going to lead out in prayer, and then I'll take, I will hand it back over to Bianca. So Father God, we come before you today to thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessings. Lord, we ask that you guide us in being able to be a better representation of you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you speak to our heart. Make sure that it's coming from a pure place when we are representing you and teaching others about you, Lord. Lord, we ask that we keep, we ask that you help us keep our focus on you, Lord, as we continue to grow in the word, in the spirit, in our business. We ask that you help us approach things with a positive attitude, despite knowing sometimes things will frustrate us. And that we ask that we come to you for that clarity in that form of frustration and help us guide us through that moment, Lord. Lord, I ask that you also help us continue to manage our time correctly so that it is a steward towards you and that it helps glorify your kingdom as kingdom CEOs, as daughters of a king, Lord. We ask that you help us get that wisdom to understand when it's okay to be a blessing to others and when it's okay to support them from a distance, Lord. We ask that you just bless us, you keep us, let this word be a meditation to everyone's heart. I hope that it was a blessing to them and that they were able to get some form of revelation, Lord. And this we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for this Proverbs 31 breakdown and the nuggets and wisdom that was pulled from it. Thank you so much, Dafina, for that release. God is good. I love this chapter, um, Proverbs 31. We hear it, we hear it a lot when um someone is talking about what it takes to be a virtuous woman. And you know, we would hear this chapter over and over. And sometimes it would make one think that we would have to match up to who this woman is in order to be virtuous. And if you don't match up, then you're not virtuous. But what I love about Proverbs is that it gives us a standard of wisdom for us to pull from. 
And so I love that um, Zafrina pulled various nuggets out of it um, to identify, especially us who are building, us who are CEOs, us who are doing what God is calling us to do. There are just certain things that you can pull from this chapter to allow you to stand in a space of difference concerning who you are and who God has called you to be. And so I love the fact that you can literally go into the proverb and search for the gold that is necessary for your situation, search for the gold that is necessary for what you're experiencing or what you may need assistance with and what you may need work on. And as I was reading Proverbs 31, um, the message translation is actually pretty good. Um, and I'm going to I want to read it for us really quickly just so we have an understanding of the wisdom that's available to pull from as we are building. But it states, a good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful, she treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the best yarns and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then, with money she's put aside, plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work, is in no hurry to call it quits for the day. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth, diligent in her homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, brings the sweaters she knits to the dress shops. Her clothes are well-made and elegant, and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in the household and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Charm will mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Adorn her with praises. And so when I read the, the message version of this, um, and as Zafina was pulling out these places of wisdom, as I said, it's so easy for us to think that if we follow all of these rules one by one, that that's what's going to make us virtuous women or women of virtue. And what the Lord was showing me was that this is literally nuggets of wisdom that we can pull from uh, that we now can stand in and establish and be birthed in so that we operate to the level and standard that the Lord is calling us to operate in. The word virtue means like behavior showing high moral standards. And so when you think about a woman of virtue, it's one who is displaying high moral standards. How do you operate on a daily basis? What does wisdom look like in your life? We know that wisdom is the principal thing, right? How do you operate from a place of wisdom in your everyday dealings? As a woman, as the one that the Lord has called for such a time as this, what does your life look like from a place of wisdom? Tafina spoke about the inside out approach and how it starts from internally, right? And even Danny was talking about that yesterday. And so what happens on the inside of us that we allow wisdom to sit so that every bit of our dealings are now spewing wisdom. Every bit of our dealings are now spewing the knowledge and understanding of God. And so if I allow wisdom to sit within me, what I do matters. What I do is showing the abundance of what I've allowed to sit. It's showing the abundance of what I allow to remain. 
We always talk about what happens when we allow something to dwell, right? Uh, uh, we use it in the form of visitors. If there's a visitor here that now becomes a dweller and that person, place, or thing is there for a long time, you're going to start seeing your characteristics begin to mold into who that person, place, or thing is because it's around and it leaves remnants of who it is around you. So now you start to become like it. There's certain things that I do now that I have um, taken up as my own because I'm around certain people. And so you'll hear certain phrases that another person might say, right? I'm around Danny a lot. And so you'll hear certain things that she would say that now all of a sudden I'm saying, not because I just intentionally took up things that she was talking about, but because I'm around her so much, automatically what begins to happen is that our language starts to form together, right? Uh, some of the characteristics start to form together. And you'll find that with people that you are around. Those of you who are married, right? You know that there are certain things that you take up um, with another person. There's certain things that you'll take up along with your husband uh, where automatically now you see yourself doing certain things or saying certain things or moving a certain way because of how much you're around that person. Um, and so when we think about Proverbs 31, there's a wisdom that wants to dwell with us so that we can now form into the woman of God that God desires us to be. And out of that abundance, things will flow, right? Out of that abundance, things will flow. One of my prayers recently is, God, I want to be a wise leader, right? I want you to show me what that looks like. I want you to show me exactly how to be like Jesus when I'm leading. What does that look like? That looks like wisdom. That looks like making wise executive decisions. We know that even the definition of a CEO is to make wise executive decisions that's going to bring us into a place of success. And so how do I make wise executive decisions on a daily as a woman with what you've placed on the inside of me? And so that I can maximize. Um, Dafina used a very important word when she was talking about time, right? It's so easy to think like, when does this woman sleep? When does she get time for herself? But it didn't have anything to do with her using all of her time. It had to do with her using her time wisely and maximizing on what God gave her. When you read this chapter, you'll see every bit of it shows a level of maximization. Every bit of it said, okay, she has all of this stuff to take care of. It talks about her kids. It talks about her husband. It talks about her work. It talks about her, her hobbies. It literally covers every single aspect. Usually that's dealing with a woman, but how she handled it, handled it so gracefully and maximized what God gave her. The point of all of this is that when God places something into a woman's hands, the nature of a woman is to take that thing and make it better. We see that in literally everything that we do. The Lord has literally graced us to take something and to make it better. If a woman gets something in her hands and it doesn't leave better than the way that it came, something is wrong. Because literally our nature, I'm telling you, our nature is to make things better. And so because of the nurturing position that God has placed us in, because we are child bearers, that we have the nature to birth something, to raise that thing, and the grace to make it better and cause deposits to see that thing grow into a space of fruition you have that same grace in what God is placing in your hands. As a woman, you have the same grace that when you when something comes into your hand, automatically, like we were talking about yesterday, you yourself is a whole womb, right? Your womb is not just inside of your body near your stomach. Your womb is you. You are the womb. And so God is like, whatever I place on the inside of you, it automatically steps into a chamber of birthing, of raising, of the grace to make this thing better. And so thank you, Holy Spirit. There are times that we feel like we cannot host and house the thing that God has called us to host and house. 
that baby that he placed on the inside of you. There are times that we get insecure regarding it. There are times that we feel like, I don't necessarily know how this is going to go down. But I've never heard a mother who had a baby in her belly think about how this thing was going to grow in her stomach. It literally, it 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 is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It is innate. Thank you, Lord. It's innate. It is innate. It is something that just flows because it is the system that God put in place concerning birth. The same confidence that a pregnant woman has to put in the process that this baby is going to grow, whether, thank you, Mo, automatic, whether this baby is going to grow, whether I want it to or not, is the same understanding that when God places something on the inside of you, the idea is that automatically this thing is going to grow. I have the responsibility as a woman now to nurture what is happening, to nurture the process, to nurture what is taking place, right? And so the same way a pregnant woman, the baby's in the belly, the baby is growing regardless. What you're in control of per se is how healthy this baby is going to be, right? To a certain extent. So meaning that you're eating the right things, meaning that you are sleeping, you know, you're getting your rest, you're not doing too much and causing stress and high blood pressure to take over. So there's certain things that you are now doing to nurture the baby that's in your belly, but it doesn't mean that the baby is not going to grow. Growth is automatic. Growth is something that is in place because this is the system that God has ordained for our babies. And so what wisdom does, just like in Proverbs 31, it gives your baby the opportunity to now be fed by a standard. It gives the baby that thing that God has placed on the inside of you to now be fed by a standard. Even the lives that we live are babies. How do we now make sure that what we do feeds this baby? How do we make sure that what we do feeds the life that we're living, right? Chantel said, the outcome of the growth is based on the wisdom you live by. Come on, that's it, right? The wisdom is literally the standards that God has given us to take almost as medicine, as nutrients, so that we are growing and we are moving the way that he desires. And so when we read Proverbs 31, don't think of it as pressure. Oh, I have to live up to the, this standard. I have to be exactly who this is saying I need to be in order for me to be virtuous. No, virtue, think of it as medicine. Think of it as something that you can take daily. Lord, how do I? It, it says it says a good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Lord, I need you to show me my worth. I need you to expose to me the, the worth of diamonds so that I understand that I'm far more than that. I understand that every bit of my decision making can literally be worth more than diamonds, that what I bring to the table, my worth is not rooted in the fact that I do these things, but you automatically, they started off that, that um, section of the chapter with talking about worth, even before they started talking about doing even before they started talking about establishing. And so worth is something that I walk in the door with. I don't have to lift a finger to establish my worth. This is what God says that I am. And so they started off with this. And then it talks about her husband trusting her without reserve, right? Never having a reason to regret it. God, how do I become a woman that my husband trusts me without any reservations, trust me without any reason to regret, right? How do I become that woman? And these are literally prayers that you can pray so that there's an establishment of who God desires for you to be. It doesn't mean that you're going to do exactly what this thing says, but you're going to become exactly what this thing is, right? There's a difference, right? Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. God, teach me how to be a generous woman. Teach me, oh God, how to never be spiteful concerning anybody in my life, right? It says she shops around for the best yarns and the cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. I look at that as she looks for the best in her life, right? 
She looks for the best of her life and then she utilizes it. Father, help me to look for the best things in my life. How do I live up to that standard, right? She's like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. Do you know how, do you, do you know how valuable trading ships are to a dock? When we have trading ships that leave America and go to other countries, literally what comes back are things that we need for our sustenance. And so it's saying that you are like a trading ship that literally you bring in good things. You bring in exotic things. You bring in, in things from faraway places that get, brings value to anything that you encounter. That's That's the worth that you're walking around with. That's the worth that you're walking around with. And so you can declare that over your life. I bring back good things. I'm like a trading ship that brings good things to anybody that I encounter. I'm a trading ship that brings good things to the lands that I, I'm dwelling on, right? That's a declaration. It's that she's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. This is, this is maximizing her time. This is being responsible. And so if if you know that this is, and it doesn't mean that every time you don't wake up before dawn, you're not virtuous, but it's talking about the overlay of how responsible this woman was. So Lord, I thank you that you are helping to be helping me to be responsible in this season so that I'm preparing, I'm organizing. Teach me how to be a better preparer. Teach me how to be a better organizer. Because it's literally a quality that causes you to stand out. It's a quality that causes you to now stand in the nature of who God has made you to be. Right? She looks over a field and buys it. Then with money, she puts aside, plants a garden. So not only does she purchase the ground, but now she's figuring out what to do with the ground. Lord, anything that, that, that ends up in my hand, teach me, Lord, how to maximize this thing. Teach me, Lord, how to now establish this thing. Many of us, we've been given some things in our hands and as we know how to attract it, but then we don't know how to maintain it. We don't know how to sustain it. We don't know how to bring that thing to the next level. So Father, I thank you that you're teaching me exactly how to exactly maximize. You're teaching me exactly how to be fruitful and multiply this thing. I don't want to be like the man who had the talent and hit it and waited for the master to come back and he gave him back the same that he gave him. I want to be the one that knew how to maximize this thing so that not only did you give it to me, but there's something that comes out of this. You didn't just give me a business for me to sit on and see it year after year be the same thing, not profitable, not reaping the harvest, not really bringing forth profits, but I want to, I want whatever you give to me returned back to you in a space of maximization. And so what does that look like for you, right? Again, these are places of wisdom that if we allow this thing to sit with us, now we're gonna begin to live our lives from that place. In your friendships, are you maximizing? When people come around you, are they leaving better than when they came, right? What does that look like? What does that look like? First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeve, eager to get started, right? She senses the worth of her work. Is telling us that one who senses the worth of their work, there's an eagerness to get started with their work, right? Is in no hurry to call it quits for the day. When I read this one, I said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me, because there's some days that I'm like, Lord, when is this day going to end, right? But it's telling us that if we, if we use wisdom to navigate how we respond to life, then the things that we do, we get dressed, we roll up our sleeves, we're eager to start. We know the worth of our work. So we're in no hurry to call it quits for the day. This thing convicted me. It convicted me. Because for me, I'm like, if I'm doing what God has called me to do, and if I'm operating on that level, there's an eagerness for me to get this work done. And it doesn't mean that things are not going to be challenging, right? It's Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. It doesn't mean that things are going to get challenging, but it just looks, it's the posture while she worked. She wasn't eager for the day to end. She wasn't eager for, 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 to call quits, right? It wasn't an eagerness for her to end the day. There was an eagerness to get started. 
she knew the worth of her work. It says she's skilled in the crafts of her home and her diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Come on, that's it. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. Preparation, proactiveness. Preparation and proactiveness, right? What does that look like for us as we are building? How do we move from a proactive place so that we're not reactive? That when things come, now all of a sudden we're surprised. What does that look like as a woman who's building? She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Nothing catches her by surprise. How do we establish ourselves to a space that surprises don't happen concerning disaster and emergencies or things of that nature because we were in a space of preparation? What does that look like for our prayer life, right? What does that look like for how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis? That we are literally prepared and organized to a certain extent where these things don't catch us by surprise. It says she makes her own clothing. She dresses in colorful linen and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, right? She brings the sweaters she knits to the dress shops. I want us to really look at this and focus on the fact that it's not about following all of these rules. It's about pulling from the wisdom of where God is calling us as women, as where she, he's calling us as women, the power and the ability that we have to stand in and to stand on as we are building. That there's this quote that I used to always say um, back in the days that I saw on Instagram and it said, I close deals and heels. And for me, like it, it was a cute quote, but for me, it spoke of Proverbs 31. Because yes, you are here to build, to establish, to make your presence known through your father. You are here to be a light. You're here to bring solutions. But you could do that with a grace. You could do that with a womanly grace. You can do it understanding who you are as a woman, right? And when I read this chapter, it speaks of our authority and power just by what we bring to the table. It didn't talk about picking up a gun and fighting in wars. It didn't talk about leading a family. It didn't talk about being the priest of our homes. It didn't talk about any of what we would consider the manly characteristics, it literally showed how powerful we are when we walk in the grace of a woman, how powerful we are when we walk in the grace of who God has called us to be, even while we are just establishing ourselves as moms, as wives, as homemakers, as business owners, right? As, as ones who take care of gardens. Or if you read through this, literally all of these speak of those graceful characteristics as women, but it's such a power behind it that cannot be denied. That yeah, I'm planting my gardens, but I can't mess with a woman like this. And when I mean what I mean by that is nobody can really tear down a woman that has these characteristics like this. And you may think that she's not powerful and strong because it's not talking about any characteristic like that directly, but this is power to me. This is strength to me. This is a fortifying. This is like, oh, she is literally set herself up to not fail. Who can stop a woman like that? Who can really deter a woman like that? Who can knock down a woman who literally puts things in place and causes this fortified response that I know who I am and I'm walking this thing out? Who can really knock down a woman of that caliber? Who? And so I want us to really think about this today, right? Dafina pulled out five. You can go back in and pull out so many more. What are some wisdoms 
that you know you need to sit with a little bit more. That as we sit with the wisdoms, we become more like them. What are some of the things that we can pull out in Proverbs 31 and say, God, I need perfecting in this area. I need perfecting in this area, right? I need to, I need to dig more into preparation and organization. I need to dig more into how I'm walking out the plans that you've given me. I need to dig more into how I am handling my home. What are the areas and asking the Lord to perfect you in that so that we can be who God is calling us to be in his fullness. In Jesus name. Thank you, Zafina, for this release this morning. God is so good. And as he's teaching us our power and our strength and being a woman and standing in that thing and walking this thing out, you bring so much to the table as people like to say, because I am the table, <laughs> right? You bring so much to the table. It is, it's essential for us to know that. It's essential for us to know that, that the, the as we stated yesterday, the Deborahs and the Esthers that are literally standing in this time to release the word of the Lord or release whatever God has given us we're changing the entire trajectory of what this world looks like. And God is doing it through women. Not that he's not doing it through men, but we're not talking about them right now. <laughs> he's doing it through women, right? You see it all over. Women are literally rising up and establishing what God is calling them into and changing the world. And so I need you to know that you have that power that what God has placed on the inside of you, you can birth, you can nurture, you can bring to a healthy place and see the 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 fruit and see the fruit of exactly what God is requiring. Amen. I don't know if anyone has anything that they want to release before we end concerning the fast and what God has been doing or concerning Proverbs 31. If not, we are going to end for today. Going once, going twice. All right, awesome. So we are on day three, ladies, of the fast. And I know that God is going to be giving us realization on another level about what we possess and what we are holding and what's in our bellies. And the fact that this is not ours, this is his, right? It's his, it's a God baby on the inside of us that every time we have ideas and concepts, allow the Lord to give you the responsibility to nurture this thing into its expected end. And you can do it and you can do it. You can do it. I pray that the confidence of the Lord will rest on us as we build what God is calling us to build as women that the confidence of the Lord will cause us to stand when we feel like failing, right? There's something about being pregnant that's undeniable. I'm like, God made it so undeniable that it's undeniable in what we feel. It's undeniable in what it looks like, right? Nobody can really hide that they're pregnant after a certain time, unless you just never show, right? But usually, we know that the belly grows so big that it's undeniable. What's on your life right now is undeniable. Like it's seen you, you're pregnant with the concepts and ideas of the Lord and it is undeniable. What you feel right now is undeniable. Those contractions, those uncomfortable days, they're undeniable, right? Those uncomfortable places, they're undeniable. The symptoms that come with it, they are undeniable. And so what you're experiencing, it's undeniable. You're pregnant. You're pregnant. And so as you are giving birth, know that it's seen, it's felt. Like we don't get to separate ourselves from what happens as we're called to be birthers, as we're called to be ones who release things into the earth realm and nurture it to its place of success. All right, so we are done for today. 
We're going to post the prayer points in the chat. How many of you found it helpful to receive those prayer installments throughout the day? Um, it was helpful for me as well. Shan, I see you. Um, Danina, I see you. Jazz, I see you. Yeah, it's um, Daph, I see you. It's it's definitely helpful because I know that our days are very busy, and so um, it's gonna help us really pivot throughout the day. Awesome, 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 ladies. All right, have an amazing Tuesday. We have push talks tonight, and so for those of you who will be on tonight, I will see you tonight at 8 p.m. Invite your friends, invite your family. Let's make sure that we are sharing who God is and what we are doing. Uh, we want to say welcome to Shamika. I know I've seen your name before, but I know that you are visiting with us. So welcome, Shamika. I hope that you were blessed by this fast. If any of you feel led to sow into the fast, you can do so using our cash app, which is Suited Circle, dollar sign Suited Circle. And um, the recordings will be on YouTube. I'll try to get them up by either today, latest, tomorrow. Okay, so you guys will have day one to day three um, on our YouTube channel. And I will also post it in the chat. Awesome. Love you, ladies. Have an amazing day. Every battle you lose, you know. Every battle you lose.